the morning of day four in very foggy and cool, like 50 degrees. Arcata, California. I was in a dumpy hotel. I was in the murder room, you know, the right next to the stairwell by the rear exit. <laughs> and the door didn't even shut that well. Fortunately, Batman was staying at the same hotel and I wasn't murdered. Their breakfast consisted of, well, you can see right here, there was the coffee was empty and there was some packets of oatmeal. None of the advertised bananas. <laughs> so I'm gonna go up to Trinidad Beach, get some coffee and head out. But my goals are chestnut back chickadee, oh, maybe one of the hummingbirds, Pacific wren. I've never gotten a photo. Wouldn't be a lifer, but I've never gotten a photo. Actually need to wear a coat here at Elkhead Trail, Trinidad, California. It's cold, chilly. Got a Pacific wren. I have band-tailed pigeon, which is awesome. I didn't know they were in this habitat. I think of them as mountain birds. Just some back chickadees. Let's go get them. So bizarre hearing Wilson's warbler <laughs> and Swainson's thrush here. They nest here in this lush coastal California forest, but back home, they're kind of at the edge of their, southern edge of their range in the boreal forest, and they nest way up in far northern Minnesota. Strange dichotomy of habitats they can thrive in. I'm gonna take a look at this Wilson's warbler. Though I got my lifer in Montana, I never had a photo before. I finally got a Pacific Wren photo. Ugh, it happened again. My uh, lens is not staying attached to the Canon R5 body, if you can believe this. And the lens fell straight down, landed upright, and stayed there, just standing up. So I'm like a foot from a sheer 300 foot cliff. Uh, you, can, you can hear Wren tit. A couple wren tits uh, singing away here, but really cool little trail, very short. But a band-tailed pigeon flock flew right below me. I uh, got a few photos. This is a gate to prevent really tall people. I, I, I don't know, I give up. I think there's pigeon guillemots and murs that nest out there, but too foggy to see and I didn't bring a scope either. But later when I got home and put up some stills on the computer screen, <laughs> I was kind of blown away. Thousands of murs nesting on that rock. I looked on eBird, there was a report of 4,000 common murs from a few weeks ago. And official surveys have noted up to 60,000 murs on these islands. Crazy. Looking for black oyster catchers. I don't see any. Forgotten how absolutely huge black oyster catchers are. 17 and a half inches long and noisy, crazy noisy. But what's cool is they are monogamous. They mate for life. 
and they occupy the same territory year after year. They live only in the intertidal zone right along the coast, all the way from Baja, Mexico, all the way up through the Aleutian Islands in Alaska. But contrary to their name, they don't eat oysters. They eat mussels and limpets and crabs. And wisely, they nest right above the high tide line. Of course they do. Just fun, funny, fun to watch birds. I have to add one more crazy boreal bird that is here along the coast, and that's Canada Jay. At first I saw one, I'm like, that can't be, it can't be. And uh, I dismissed it, but on the way back, sure enough, Canada Jay. <laughs> so I'm looking around, it's, it doesn't really have the structure of a boreal forest, really, but I don't know. So Canada Jay, Swainson's thrush, and Wilson's warbler. <laughs> uh, funny. There's absolutely no way to show the enormity of these redwoods. <laughs> just in photos, it just they look like, oh yeah, they're big trees. Finally saw a bird in the redwoods, <laughs> first one, and it was a hermit thrush. Bird-wise, it's a little quiet in the redwoods, and I expected that. I was there just to be in awe of these trees. I don't know, this road's getting narrower and narrower. Oh no, I've got a, there's a tree in my way. This is a rental car. I should have stopped here and got my kids and wife some awesome Bigfoot memorabilia. Ah, I wasn't expecting that. Well, I was hoping for that. California Thrasher. I have a soft spot for Thrashers. Love them. Hear the music? <laughs> Must be a Quinciera. Quinciera? Quinciera? <laughs> so I guess a video of it singing, but you're gonna hear the... <laughs> music in the background but uh, yeah got photos of them on the ground and perched up and singing in beautiful light It.
have no idea. Yellow Breasted Chat's song is so loud. I thought it was a mockingbird. Merlin schooled me. We don't get this bird in Minnesota. No longer a warbler, it's in its own family, Ictiridae now. And off to Bodega Bay and Bodega Head. First had to go by the, yeah, that's the school that was in Alfred Hitchcock's The Birds. Oh, well, so I learned. Bodega Bay, very touristy little spot, but if you can get through all that and over to Bodega Head, it's pretty darn cool and the fog had burned off and it was gorgeous. After being distracted by the pelicans and wildflowers, I did make it to Bodega Head and cool rocks right off the coast where they're nesting western gulls, brant's cormorants, pelagic cormorants, and common murres. So I was finally able to get kind of close, not, you know, super detailed portrait close, but it was kind of fun and these gulls are always entertaining. The chicks are speckled and kind of perfect camouflage for this rock face. I saw gulls and cormorants eating these flat, kind of spiny fish. I was happy to see some pelagic cormorants up close. I've never gotten great looks at them, you know, usually flying way out over the ocean. But these guys are in breeding plumage. Look at those white patches on the lower flanks. Red face, glossy blue-black plumage. Um, a lot of heat shimmer, so not the greatest photos. These are the least gregarious of the six species in the northern Pacific, nesting alone or in small colonies. From the top of Bodega Head, you could get kind of close to a nesting Brant's cormorant colony. Uh, Brant was a Russian naturalist. Of course, that name will be changing because all the honorific names of birds will be eliminated. Maybe this will be the blue-throated cormorant because they have this stunning royal blue throat in courtship display. Here's a male coming back with some nest material. He's going to present it to the female and they'll be have a little interesting little display here. This one's already on the nest. No, not for her. So there, he presents it to her. She's going to kind of grab it and fling it around a little bit. And yeah, that's part of the courtship display. Okay, it's good enough. Put it in the nest. From my understanding, it's the male that does the sky pointing display as seen here. And I, I'm not quite clear because the sexes are identical in all plumages. So very interesting just to watch this all play out. And maybe this is as good a time as any to announce that I am starting a new organization called Behavior Birding. Putting the watching back in bird watching because just sitting and watching, well, these cormorants in this case, it's fascinating. You can learn so much and what you don't know when you get home, look it up on birdsoftheworld.org and even read some of the research papers that are linked there. But it's going to combine listing with watching behavior because you'll get points for seeing different kinds of behavior uh yeah so a little motivation there on this rock there were also common murres that were nesting and this is about as close as i've ever gotten to common murres and there was a lot of heat shimmer coming off the rock so the photos aren't the greatest some are with a 2x converter uh, which lowers the quality a bit and the heat shimmer, but pretty cool birds, little penguin-like seabirds. They are actually known to dive down to 300 feet or more to find food, 
and they have pretty small wings so they can propel themselves underwater but in the air it's a little more of a struggle for them once again a few token pigeon guillemots hanging around yeah would love to get a good photo of them but not gonna happen here uh, before leaving Bodega Bay, I had to stop in and get a overpriced but oh so good crab sandwich. Yeah. I wanted to visit Point Reyes because um, I'd never been there. I know it's much better fall migration through winter for shorebirds and waterfowl and elephant seals, but I wanted to still see what I could find. Hmm, where am I going to park? The advantages of coming on a Monday morning when the elephant seals aren't here. I got Drake's Beach at Point Reyes all to myself. <laughs> Almost. And unfortunately, all to myself because there's no elephant seals here right now. I'm gonna ask the rangers where I can find one. I'd love to see a Thule elk too. I don't know if there's many birds I can get here because I've pretty much cleaned up in the last week here. But yeah, just stunning beach. Must be low tide. Oh, a seahorse washed up on the shore. Don't have sandy knees you're not doing it right you need to get low to the ground to get those cool eye level perspectives well evidently I'm I'm well I know I'm not here at the right time of the year for the big congregations of elephant seals but I did get to watch one guy I don't know he looked like he was he'd face into the incoming breakers and looks like he was like sifting food out of him and I thought he was going to come up on the beach, so I kind of held off on the photos and video a little I bit. I hadn't because he's gone now. Time for a Yaritos in celebration of a lifer elephant seal. <laughs> but I don't know how I'm gonna open it. They're not twist off. I used a fence post. <laughs> Cheers. Now what am I gonna do? Ah, uh, no lifers on this leg of the trip, but that's okay. A lot of species I hadn't seen in ages. But for me, superstar bird of this leg of the coastal California trip would be Brant's cormorant. That stunning blue throat and their crazy courtship antics. Love it. Here are a few of my favorite shots. Maybe a little less bird on a sticky and maybe a little more creative or interesting. But remember, after the fourth episode of this trip, I'm going to have a fifth episode which will be just about photography and how I did and my favorite shots and some failures and some successes. Thank you.